What's new? Preview. A huge opportunity came when Matchframe recommended me for a new daily strip show called Preview from the creators of Entertainment Tonight. This is one of those shows a little bit like news where you crank out a piece, maybe two every day. If you think it's easy to choose the eight new leading ladies we'll love to love in the 90s, think again. But the editors at Movie Line magazine have narrowed it down, and Preview has the first exclusive look at their selection. She used to look good to me, but now I'm fired up. Simply irresistible. Looks don't hurt, but it's taken more than beauty over the years to reign among the lofty leading ladies of the silver screen. The editors of Hip Movie Line magazine have chosen eight new actresses with credentials that they believe will captivate the country this decade. We wait for someone to leave an impression. But we think we've um, found some people who, with the right breaks, really have a chance of lasting. 23-year-old Julia Roberts gave a stunning performance opposite boyfriend Kiefer Sutherland in Flatliners. Now this pretty woman is Hollywood's latest Cinderella story. Her sexuality is fully present on screen. <laughs> and also has had a major hit, the combination. You've got to have both to actually get to the top. This was as close to news as I ever got. Played for 25 centuries, it's the oldest team sport known to man. This was maybe my favorite job because it required the segment producer to have done their prep and the show producers to evaluate their script and approve or tweak it before entering the edit bay. And because it was a linear world, you had to be decisive. Like Polo. And by the huge turnout at the Lake Tahoe Fat Tire Festival, it's obvious that this is not just the latest trend in aerobic activity. I'm on. Back in. And artful as it might have been, it was still disposable TV, so best not to overthink. Next. As the nation's top swimwear designers dive into 1991, the name of the game is fun. I like summer girls, the way they walk and talk. The song is called No Way, and the band is Valentine. We love playing music. But that's not all there is. Each producer came with their own set of experiences and approaches for doing a story. It ain't that easy. And then challenged me to come up with a different look for each piece that we did. So it was always kind of fun and different. The plane climbs to 12,000 feet above Paris, California. The anticipation and nerve levels soar inside the cabin. The door is raised, and the Virgin Voyagers prepare to meet the deep blue sky. And naturally, if skydiving was involved, I had to cut it. Once you take the plunge, you experience the biggest difference from traditional first-timers. Your chute doesn't open right away. Your debut dive is a free fall of over 7,000 feet at 120 miles per hour. You there! Or dances with wolves for that matter. Watch for some of that familiar B-roll. In Dances with Wolves, Kevin Costner plays Lieutenant John J. Dunbar, a Union Army cavalryman who finds himself drawn to the western frontier of the 1860s. Hi. It's there on the plains that he comes to learn about the ways of the Sioux and finds out about his true self. Come. Please, sit down. After stunning success as an actor in Bull Durham and Field of Dreams, Costner is making his directorial debut in Dances with Wolves. And when I wave, that's when you guys will go. Directing major motion pictures is a major risk that only a handful of actors, Eastwood, Allen, Beatty, have excelled at. That's pretty lofty company. And I asked Costner if doing both was overwhelming. Now that's got to be difficult, I would think, to direct yourself because you're in every scene. Well, I guess that's what you'd think, but from my experience, it was not hard. I cut over 100 segments on preview before we were canceled, which is a harsh reality for the hundreds of people who worked on it in both LA and New York, and kind of how the business works. You just have to enjoy it while it lasts. Laws of science state what goes up must come down. I did make several important connections on preview. The next major one through the coordinating producer, Tara Sandler. Tara hired me for a series called Stunt Masters. 
where I cut many of the segments and also put all 22 episodes together. We cut it all at match frame, no less. Grab a seat and hold on tight. Welcome to Stuntmaster. It looks great. One of these days, Alice to the moon. Okay, what are we saying? We just need a plane in this shot and everything will be normal. <laughs> now it's time for Remy Julien and... No, it's not. No, I can't have a cigarette. I just can't. Because I'll smoke again and then it'll never end. Fist clenching. Adrenaline pumping. A lot of courage there. Well, it follows the action. Mm -hmm. So what, what's next? Well, we could follow the rundown. But okay. Michael hasn't sent it over yet. Typical. Or we could follow the script. Good. But Lori hasn't sent it over yet. So? We could go to Coeur Good idea. Okay. What do you get when you have producers that had a lobotomy? What do you get? An executive producer! Whoa! Oh -ho -ho! The outpost sentry stands guard. A lone terrorist stalks him like an animal. Her mission, liberate him to the hereafter. Each show had a featured stunt and stunt man split into two separate parts and showed how they were gonna do it, how they did it, and then multiple replays of it. This one had the additional eye-catching dramatization as a bonus. Recreating the effect of a hand grenade explosion demands three distinct and definitely dangerous devices. A full body burn, a fiery explosion, and an air ram to hurl the stuntman himself. Who better to attempt this than a man whose middle name is Danger? Veteran stuntman Dennis Danger Madelone. Yeah! When that series ended, it was back to freelance work wherever I could find it. Incredible. And then you go up in the volcano, and you go down, down, down. And we're here outside the Back to the Future ride at Universal Studios. This ride is like being in your own movie. It's very cool. And I found this wonderful group of lovely people that are hanging out here. And, and well, they're like going to go on the ride with me. It's going to be great. We're just going to go on. No, 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 no. Did you tell them that I was claustrophobic? Here we go. All that glitters is not gold in Hollywood, where the passing of a bygone era is now reflected in the frightening pools of light that illuminate the hellish lives of the runaway youths of Tinseltown. Trapped in a never-ending nightmare of survival, these kids, many abandoned since early childhood, compete daily against the carnivorous machine that is the boulevard of broken dreams. A lot of people that come to Hollywood, they don't have a family. Hello, hello. That's how we can make our own family, Hollywood. Hollywood's our family because we are Hollywood, right? It's cool like that. Tell us to grow out here, man. Tell us to grow out here in Hollywood. Hey! For some of these hardened kids, there are still dreams of better days. But for most, there is a tragic sense that this is the best they can expect, that their lives have played out, and this is the end of their rainbow. We get drunk every day, we collect our bottles, and we recycle them to get drunk again. See? And they're just trying to forget the pain. Yeah, exactly. Pain. That's why you gotta just take a chance. 
Where are we gonna get our next meal? If you come out here, you're gonna regret it because there's your life in danger in many ways. Pass away tonight. If I kill myself tonight. Um, I wish I don't know Hollywood. I love you. Dogs, I love you. Show, the only show made by saber-toothed cats or Arabian Oryx. On today's episode, we'll watch the birth of a rare California condor. We'll discover why camels never work up a thirst. We'll check out how animals are equipped to beat the heat. We'll visit a dig for Ice Age bones. It's the pit. Then, on our wild adventure, we'll get washed up and washed out on our way to a place where wild horses run free. Jessica, welcome to Nickelodeon's Wild Side Show here at the San Diego Zoo. Meanwhile, back in match frame. Gino, no! No, Gino! Gino! Gino, please! You're welcome. Drop it, pup! Drop it! Okay, cut! Yeah, uh, Christy, that was very unusual. I don't remember the, the uh, line, you're welcome, that is not in the script. You know, in Brooklyn, we got a saying, you may not have heard it out here in uh, Malibu. A quick gun is good, quick lip is better. Of course, if your lip fails, it doesn't hurt to have a few slugs handy. Yeah, well, let's lose the line. I don't think you heard what I said. Are you kidding me, right? Am I? Frank Christie played the heavy on the silver screen, and in real life, he was no lightweight either. Actors, you can't live with them, you can't shoot them. <laughs> like to. Frank had this tough guy image, but his main weapon was humor. Remember uh, Bogart's famous line when he said, if you don't want the truth, don't ask me. Well, that was Frank. It was like having a pet human. <laughs> Marshall, just he worshipped me. It was great because he just, he just idolized me. Every few years, a motion picture sheds light on a dark truth about contemporary urban life. The big city in our modern world is somewhere where there's thousands of people, but you can be completely alone. A new film from Columbia Pictures, Single White Female, shows us how the terror we've come to expect on the streets can be innocently invited into our homes. He took me, he picked me up, he threw me down on the bed. It seems so wonderful at first, like sisters playing house. You can be with someone uh, because you're sharing a life and because you truly love a person, but when you need to be with someone not out of love, but out of need, that's where it starts. Yeah, I had this one roommate. We had a lot of fun together. We used to stay up till 3 o'clock in the morning talking about, you know, crazy things in life and getting into these really great conversations. Where'd you guys learn to dress like that? I mean, it's just so New York. <laughs> I think you look very comfortable. You know, she said I was kind of like the older sister that she never had. Hey, what do you think? I think that you should get them. Oh, God, you like them? Well, I think they go with that dress. You take them. Well, I'll just borrow them when I want to. <laughs> 